The video you are about to see has been carefully designed to guide you in your approach for caring for Burmese pythons. Its goals are to show you how to buy your first Burmese python and how to care for it. Before we go into how to buy and look after your python, it is important that several points are considered before purchasing one of these graceful creatures. Burmese pythons are very common in the captive bred market. So much so, the reptile rescue organisations are inundated with large pythons which are no longer wanted by their owners. When these rescue centres appear on TV, it causes snake keepers to gain a bad reputation as people who do not look after their animals and thus help in the argument that reptiles are not suitable to be kept. It is vital that any potential keepers study the snake's needs and requirements prior to purchasing one. It is simply not acceptable to realise you do not have room for an 18 foot snake once you have bought a baby. Remember these points before you purchase. These snakes can grow 9 feet in their first year. Burmese pythons can reach 18 feet as adults. You will have to provide from mice to rabbits as food during their life. These snakes can live in excess of 20 years. At the end of this video you will see details of the Reptile Trust which is an organisation based in Newcastle. They specialise in rehoming and treating badly neglected reptiles. If you would like to make a donation to this charity then please do not hesitate to contact them using the details shown later in this video. When kept properly these snakes are incredibly rewarding. As a general rule these snakes have a calm disposition and enjoy being handled. They are curious and like to go walk about. Within the species particular specimens often show different personalities and foibles. Burmese pythons are normally good feeders and if allowed will devour anything and all food which is put in the cage. Given the right conditions these snakes will live happily in captivity for a good many years. But before we go into their requirements, why don't we start from the beginning? Burmese pythons are part of a group of snakes called boids. Pythons have been known to us for a considerable period of time. From the times of early explorers in Africa, Asia and Australasia, Myths and tales of the legendary reticulated python spread back to the homeland. In recent years, as more pythons have been kept, myths and tales have been replaced by husbandry and research. The python group covers species from two thirds of the globe, and the diversity of the species has to be seen to be believed. All pythons have certain features in common. They are all oviparous, which means they lay eggs externally to the body. All pythons constrict their prey, which means to say they generally throw coils round the animal, and every time the animal breathes, the snake gets tighter until they cannot breathe, and the animal dies of asphyxiation. Burmese pythons come from India and Southeast Asia. The Latin name for them is Python Molarus bivitatus. They are closely related to the Python Molarus Molarus or True Indian Python and the Python Molarus Pimbura or Silanese Python. However, at present, nearly all Burmese pythons are captive bred and therefore imported specimens are rare. The main type of movement that the Burmese python uses is called rectilinear crawling. The rectilinear crawling allows the snake to move in a straight line by a complex system of belly muscle contractions. 
This allows the snake to move forward on its jointed ribs. The combination of this sees the snake pushing itself over the ground via the ventral scales. All of this process is accomplished by the snake having a very complicated vertebrae. In the human backbone we have 33 bones. In the Burmese python you will see a vertebrae of 350. This gives the snake great flexibility and movement. Before buying your snake, it is important that you have the cage correctly set up. When purchasing your hatchling, it is also important that you look for the following things. That they have clear, bright eyes. The body should be rounded but not fat and stretched. The skin should be flexible but not wrinkled, as this often means the snake is dehydrated. When the cage door is opened, the snake should be alert, looking round and flicking its tongue. Ask the shop owner, has the snake fed recently? Make sure you handle the snake in the shop. Does it feel warm to the touch? It is a common trick of dubious reptile shops to lower the temperature in the cage and alleviate various symptoms. Have a look at the cage the snake came out of and check to see if it looks clean and that there is no feces which looks like it has been there for a while. Also that the cage is not damp as this can lead to sores. Check generally around the cage to see it has been maintained properly. Take a look around the rest of the shop and observe how the other animals are kept and whether they look healthy. All these points are important when buying any snake from a reptile shop. It is generally much better to buy from a breeder but it is still important to follow the points already mentioned. These people have often been keeping reptiles for a number of years and are normally happy to pass on any tips that they have picked up through experience. Quite often breeders keep feeding and shedding records. This can also aid you in assessing the health of the snake. If you are happy with all these considerations then purchase your snake and move it to its new vivarium as soon as possible. It is important that you allow your snake to acclimatise to its new cage. Once put in its cage, do not disturb it for at least 48 hours. Housing your snake. There are many types of vivarium on the market. Wood and melamine seem to suit Burmese pythons well. When furnishing your new cage, it is important that the cage is sealed. This will stop any moisture or spilled water leaking out and rotting the wood. There should be at least one ventilation grill to allow movement of air throughout the cage. The cage should be big enough for the snake to move around but small enough so that the snake feels secure. A good size to start a hatchling Burmese python would be about 36 inches by 18 by 18. Remember that a baby can grow 9 feet in its first year. If it has glass doors, then they should be thick enough to be secure. A good idea is a cage lock. This will make sure the vivarium is secure and unwanted disappearances don't happen. Remember that this will be one of many cages in its journey from hatchling to adult. Burmese pythons require temperatures of 82 to 90 Fahrenheit. The heating of the vivarium is a subject in which there are many different opinions. Whichever way you choose to heat the cage, a thermo gradient should always be achieved. This means that one area of the cage is hotter than the other. This enables the cold-blooded animal to regulate their own body temperature by moving between these areas. A basking area for a Burmese python should be approximately 88 to 92 Fahrenheit. A nighttime drop in temperature should also be encouraged. 80 to 84 Fahrenheit would be adequate for this. 
Always remember that the temperature in the cage will reflect in the snake's digestion process. Snake's temperature requirements are fairly specific and so it is important that you are aware of what the temperature in the cage is. The use of thermometers will aid the reptile keeper in this requirement. The market has several types for sale ranging from thermographic thermometers which stick to the inside wall of the vivarium and give a general heat guide to the min-max electronic types which usually are very accurate. Using whichever thermometer you choose this will give you greater control over housing your snake. Heating your vivarium. Heating your vivarium can be done in many ways. However it is done, a thermostat should be used at all times to control the temperature. This should alleviate burn related accidents that are all too prevalent in the herping world. Ceramic heaters are an effective way to focal hotspots in the cage, but guards should always be used as surfaces of the heater become very hot and will burn at the slightest touch. Heat mats are commonly used for floor heating. These heaters are often used in conjunction with another form of heating, thus producing what we discussed earlier called a thermogradient. In larger cages where bigger Burmese pythons are kept, tubular heaters are often the heater of choice. Available in 2 foot and 4 foot sizes, they allow much bigger cages to be heated in an effective way. They also have specially designed guards that can be used with them. Many reptile keepers use light bulbs as a form of heating. There is much discussion to the validity of this heat source. The conclusion to this argument is a hard one as there are many breeding successes where light bulbs are the form of heating. If bulbs are your choice of heating, then guards again must be used to avoid burns. We do not recommend light bulbs as a form of heating as it is somewhat difficult to connect them to a thermostat and maintain a stress-free atmosphere within the vivarium. Lighting your vivarium Snakes do not need specific lighting. Some herpetologists maintain that full spectrum lighting is a necessity to breeding. However, breeders that do not use this lighting have no discernible differences in their breeding successes. There are many lighting products on the market, from full spectrum fluorescent tubes to decorative lighting which is designed to bring out the natural colours within the snake. Whichever lighting you choose, make sure that the snake's needs always come first. For instance, an emerald tree boa which spends most of its life beneath the canopy of a rainforest will be used to less light than a snake which lives in the desert. Always try to seek out information on the natural habitat of the snake. This will give you a guide to its lighting. In your cage there should be a hide box as hatchlings are quite nervous and need to feel secure. There should also be a water bowl with fresh water in it. The clay bowls are best as they are quite heavy and not easily knocked over. Newspaper makes a good substrate and is easy to clean. Other substrates which are available can look more natural but are generally not as clean. Other furnishings also can be put in to help the snake while sloughing, such as a large piece of rock or bark which gives the snake a rough surface to rub against. <laughs> 